Hello, my name is Joe LaPlaca. I'm the Senior Director of the Cardi Gallery in London. I'm proud to present a major exhibition of the Italian legend Sergio Lombardo. Installed over four floors, the exhibition looks back on the most important periods of Lombardo's career from 1958 to today. His iconic 1960s canvases formed the basis of Italian pop art. Later, he was among the very first artists to incorporate algorithms and mathematical programs to generate paintings and sculptures. As a young artist in Rome, he was at the center of the Scuola di Piazza di Popolo, a group that included Mario Schifano, Francesco Lo Savio, Pino Pascali, and many others. Collectively, they were named after the historic Roman square where they gathered. Lombardo's generation redefined Italian art of the 1960s. As a group, they embraced popular imagery and experimented with new materials and techniques. In their work, they reflected the country's shifting cultural and social landscape. Now 83, Lombardo has never stopped evolving. An artist as well as a trained psychologist, he has dedicated years to the science of aesthetic experience. In his research, he studies the way that art produces a profound psychological reaction. In the exhibition, Lombardo plays with scale, abstracted forms, and stark contrasts of black and white to elicit powerful, unconscious responses in the viewer. Lombardo was born in 1939 in Rome, where he still lives and works today. In the late 1950s, still only 18 years old, he abandoned his studies in law to pursue a career in art. He found himself in the Italian capital at the heart of an artistic and cultural awakening. As part of the Piazza di Popolo school, artists like Mario Schifano, Janus Canellis, Giuseppe Fiorone, and Tano Festa defined the visual character of the 1960s. Reacting against the trends of social realism and art informal, their work referenced consumer culture, the world of mass media, and often contemporary politics. In place of tradition, they valued experimentation, irony, and intellectual freedom. Seeing himself as more of a theoretical rather than a traditional artist, Lombardo longed to reclaim the spirit of futurism, the belief that modern art should be a collective and universal pursuit of the new, not the result of individual inspiration. Lombardo made his first series of works, The Monochromy, in 1958 while he was still in high school. He attempted to radically erase all subjectivity and personal expression from the act of painting. No subject, no color, no discernible reference to the outside world. Instead, he composed regular grids of paper squares and collaged them onto canvas. He then painted over them with black industrial enamel rather than oil paint. He called these anti-art. The first monochromy were a provocation aimed at the academic establishment. When first shown in 1959, these stark, minimalist works caused a shock in an art world dominated by the expectation of realism. For Lombardo, this response was actually a validation. His intention was to emphasize the reaction of the viewer, not the status of the individual artist. The artist must not express himself, he said. The artwork is only a stimulus to make evident the expression of the public. Lombardo sees the encounter with a work of art as an event, a charged psychological experience. When a spectator is confronted with a series of enigmatic forms, without a clear point of reference, each one cannot help but react differently. Meaning is constantly subject to change, suspended. Lombardo calls this eventualism. Begun in 1961, the gesti tipici, or typical gestures, are larger than life silhouettes of political figures from around the world. His most celebrated paintings, these black and white works, have since become synonymous with the energy of Italian pop art in the 1960s. 
In parallel with American pop art, Lombardo channels the bold energy of television, cinema, and advertisement into compositions that hover between figuration and abstraction. While not direct political statements, the gesti tipici capture the era's preoccupation with mass media and the social conditioning caused by television. Lombardo reinterprets existing photographs of influential politicians and explores the psychological appeal that their images have over an audience. The abstracted features of John F. Kennedy, Nikita Khrushchev, and Charles de Gaulle are generalized yet still recognizable. The artist reduces them and their gestures to pure archetypes. The silhouettes attain a heightened aura, similar to the impact of propaganda posters, forcing the viewer to experience the awe or even subjugation. When I painted the first gesti tipici, says Lombardo, I had no desire to be seen as an artist. I wanted to study the psychological impact that authoritarian poses could have on our peripheral vision. By 1965, Lombardo was looking beyond two-dimensional painting. Dissatisfied with the label of pop artist, he left figuration behind again. He began experimenting with sculptural geometric elements. The superquadri, as the name suggests, brings painting into the three-dimensional space. Lines and curves are magnified on a massive scale. They take over the exhibition walls and floor in different configurations, transforming our perception of space. Lombardo created these works as interlocking modular systems that could be assembled and taken apart in endless iterations by the audience. I wanted to create a surprising situation, the artist said at the series, in which the visitor of the exhibition had to find himself in the role of an actor, even if at first he had come in the role of a spectator. The gallery goes from a space of contemplation to one of experience and active participation. Lombardo has always been fascinated by chance, the notion that art can be made without premeditation, spontaneously, even accidentally. In the 1980s, he put this idea in practice with the stochastic paintings, an ambitious, ongoing series of works. The word stochastic describes a process that is random, with outcomes that are impossible to predict. These two early collages have a playful Dada sensibility. At first, Lombardo experimented by photocopying scraps of white and black cardboard, dropped on the photocopying machine at random. He saw that the resulting images had a strong, almost hallucinatory power. The subjective hand of the artist was now ultimately made irrelevant. As the process evolved, he wrote generative mathematical models that could create similarly randomized patterns. Today, Lombardo continues to use algorithms with predefined geometric parameters, generating interwoven shapes in infinite possibilities. The quilting series from 217 is based on a modular system of tiles that can be rearranged in multiple ways, creating different composite images every time. These abstract landscape function as massive Rorschach tests for the viewer. Everyone finds different interpretations and visual associations that are both surprising and revealing. This test of our perception is pushed to its extreme in Lombardo's most recent series of paintings, The Unpredictable Faces. Lombardo applies the same mathematical method to emulate and distort the human figure, challenging our natural understanding of facial expressions and their psychological import. From my point of view, says Lombardo, the system of Euclidean geometry is obsolete. My brain lives in a topological world without center and without boundary. Infinitely elastic, dynamic, stochastic.